Hello everyone, Kevin Stevenson here with GiveMeToTheGeek.com and today we're going to have my very first 10 gigabit switch that I've got to play with. I am very excited about this. And, uh, I'm going to unbox this guy, show you what it is, uh, and uh, play around with it a little bit. So let me just get started. All right, here we go. Here it is. It is a router, Mikrotik router board switch. Uh, this one here is the, and I'll put the uh, put the part number up on the screen here. But it is a CRS three one two dash four C dash eight XG dash RM. Don't worry, I'll show you that later. But let's just go ahead and unbox this guy. First of all, what you get? I'll open up the box. Some of these things. Dual power cables. Open this up a little bit. Oh, there it is. Okay. So we get a little bit of paperwork here. Um, we have the tabs. For the ears to mount them some on a rack. You have feet if you want to mount it on a desk. And then the screws. Okay. But really what you're interested in is this guy. Oh yeah. Here it is. If you want to take a look at that real quick. Microtech Cloud Router Switch. And then here's your part number. Like I said, I'll post up here. SFP plus ports, 10 gig, and they're they're the shared with this. The blue ones are the shared, and then you have eight 10 gig Ethernet ports, console port, management port, USB, and then on the back, dual power, lots of fanage. So all right, now we're gonna take and we're gonna hook this up and just take a look and play with it. Okay, great. So here we are. I have now set up the 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 switch. I plugged it into my network and everything, and now we need to find it. So by default, this switch is going to have an IP address of 192.168.88.1. So you need to reconfigure your PC to be on that subnet in order to get to it. So let me show you. I've done that. And here we are logged in for the very first time this is what you get default configuration uh, set up the configuration that's been installed <clears throat> um, it, you know it says go to system set a password upgrade go to packages enable firewall firewall and trust so I'm gonna go ahead and hit close right here and I'm gonna back this out a little bit because I made it a little bit too too big so Router mode, bridge mode, internet, blah, blah, blah. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here um, that you can set for this guy. Now, I'm going to actually switch this guy over to automatic for addressing. And that way it'll be DHCP and get an IP address from my DHCP server for the time being. And that way I can hop back on the internet and, if, and it'll be on the internet and it, we can get the firmware and stuff like that. Okay, so we switch this back over to, over to automatic. And um, <clears throat> leave that. I'm going to set a password. So there's a password. Give it a name. Check for updates, resets. But we're gonna just going to go ahead and apply this configuration right now. So in theory, that's been applied. Right? So again, first time using these uh, Microtik. Uh, I hear people say Mikrotik, Microtik. I, I kind of like the way it, Microtik better, but but you know who knows. So in theory, that is set up. So now we're at the two thirteen address. All right. So admin, no password. Boom. That's because I set a password, and it did take it. Okay. So. Here we are back in the router OS. Let's just uh, make this a little bit bigger again so that everyone can see it. And so now you might be like, well, what do you do? Well, so the quick set, this it's 
setup is a switch already now. You're you're in it. Uh, router OS. Um, it has an IP address, and if that's all you're going to do, you can you can do it from there. So if we go over to the web fig, then we're going to see all these these ports. So Ethernet one is what I have connected and bridge one. So I have over here the first port I just plugged in to my LAN. And so now it's on. That's what you see right here. Now, I don't actually have any 10 gig stuff at the moment to plug into this. So we're going to be just playing with one gig. But as you can see, there is a lot, a lot in router OS. Um, and so what we're going to probably do is just take a look at this stuff. And and so overall here on the left hand side is just massive, massive, massive stuff. Now. There is a a switch OS version in here somewhere. And, and so what we're going to do is maybe try to find that. And I think what that does is it simplifies stuff because the router OS in here is meant to um, have a lot more features. These guys have a lot more than just switch features in them. And so they're pretty cool that way. Okay. So let's see. Where do we think that might be? Let's get this switched over to switch OS. And that will eliminate a whole bunch of these extra things and make things a little bit simpler to mess with. So you go over to system, and then I think you need to find uh, well, there's DustWOS right there. I thought it was system, and router board, and then settings. And then boot OS. So you change that to SWOS, switch OS. Okay. And then you hit apply. And you hit okay. And now um, we're going to reboot this. System, reboot. Okay. And then boom. We'll give that just a minute to do its thing, and then we will reload the config. All right, here we go. She's been rebooted, and now if you notice over here in the left-hand corner, it does say SWOS, which is switch OS, and then log in. Now, interestingly enough, when I did that, it must have reset it back to the original password of admin and no password. So we're going to have to change that. Um, so here we go. Here's our eight ports that we have regular and then the combo ports, which are the SFP also capable. So you can copper SFP. Uh, there you go. So as you can see, this is much different than what we had just a few minutes ago. But if you've been in switches before, it looks a whole lot more like what you would expect it to be, right? All right. So we go down here to system and, and everything. And here's that. Um, now, somewhere in here, there's going to be the how to change it back to router OS. And so if you scroll all the way down here to the bottom, I'll have to move this because my head's in the way. Uh, you will see boot router OS and reboot down here, right? So that will get you there. So old password, nothing new password. Change password. Boom, and we're in, right? System health gives you the temperature, the fans, the power supply. Notice that one of these says failed. That's because it has two power supplies. And I only hooked up one of them uh, when I set this up. So uh, redundant power supply, which is amazing. This thing, you know, uh, it has a lot of bang through the bar. You want to go to upgrades, you can look at here. Currently installed version 2.12.
new version, 2.13. Okay. So let's download and upgrade. So basically, we're updating the operating system. So you, they've got a special tab over there, nice and easy. You'll hear it a little bit in the background because, you know, it's got all those fans. Remember, this is 10 gigabit copper, and those can can kind of be suck a lot of power to, to run over that. So um, we'll get this going. So like I said, it's rebooting right now, and uh, it has rebooted. And you can see it now we're in 2.13 for OS. Now, does it look a lot different? No. It doesn't seem to look a lot different, does it? So I don't know that there's a whole lot of difference between that version and the previous version. DHCP with fallback, right? So um, just under the general, we're going to go over a couple things. I'm going to keep this short. Um, if you, the IP acquisition. So I showed you how to change it in the router OS, what we did. Now, if you're here and you want to go back to a static IP address, you just change it here to static or DHCP only. Right now, it's set at DHCP with a fallback, and that fallback IP address is this 88.1, and that 88.1 is the default mixer tick that you'll get on the piece of paper that comes with it, right? So allow from ports and all this stuff. We're not going to do any of these things today. Like I said, and down here at the bottom is the change your password, and, and then you can back up your your uh, configuration down here too uh, with the buttons. And I'll we'll just move this over to the side a little bit so you can see that too. But restore backup, save backups, reset configuration, boot in the router OS, general reboot. So if you're using this as just a non-managed 10 gigabit switch, there's all you need to know. Um, again, this is the one I'm using. It's a pretty awesome uh, switch. Uh, and I am going to deploy this at a customer and get to play with it and and actually hook it up some 10 gigabit stuff. So I'm pretty excited about that. But I wanted to go and show you guys this. All right. So there you have it. That's the basics of getting a, a Mikrotik switch set up and ready to use. Of course, you could have left that in router OS and done all the normal switching things that you would do in router OS. But... Like I said, SwitchOS is, I don't want to say dumbed down, but it's more focused on one specific task being a switch. So I'm Kevin Stevenson with GetMeTheGeek.com. If you'd like to hire us for your project, go ahead and reach out to us at our website. We have a form you can fill out there. If you'd like to support my channel directly, you can buy me a coffee. You can also go and hit the uh, little subscribe and like buttons. I really appreciate that. And you can also, um, there's a paid version of our channel which gets you into the discord and in discord you can talk to us there and we, we can have discussions and conversations about what's going on and maybe help you out with a few things again we'll see you next time